Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Hey, listen, I am certain that those of you who are fragrance obsessed like I am fragrance obsessed have already watched countless videos on this, but in an effort to push myself out of my comfort zone on this here YouTube channel, I'm gonna give my little two cents. But before we get into today's video, please make sure that you are subscribed and be sure to hit that notification bell boo so you are notified every single time I upload a video. And if you enjoy the video, I'd greatly appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up, but if you give me a thumbs down, nobody really cares because they can't see it anymore. And of course, per usual, I will have every single thing that I mentioned here today linked down below in the description box for your convenience. So if you are planning to shop, please make sure that you use the links down below in the description box because it really does help to support my channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Now let's go ahead and dive into this review because I've been wearing this fragrance for a couple of days and I have some thoughts. Now just in case you are not familiar, Kayali was founded by a beauty guru by the name of Huda Katan. If you know anything about the OG beauty guru era, Huda is not an unfamiliar name at all. And while Huda and Huda Beauty is definitely problematic in their own right, they are still making major moves in the beauty industry. So underneath of that Huda Beauty umbrella is the house of Kayali, which is a designer fragrance house that has taking the fragrance community by storm. Today, like I said, we're going to be discussing Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. Love Fest Burning Cherry 48 is actually the very first fragrance that I have picked up from the House of Kayali. The notes just spoke to me, but we'll get into that in just a second. So here is what the travel spray looks like. Very dainty, very cute. When I placed my order, I did not know I would be getting a travel spray. The little tiny version of their full size fragrances are so, so cute. So I definitely thought that I was going to be getting that packaging, but I got a travel spray. Not necessarily a deal breaker. I mean, the travel spray is cute. It's definitely nice to be able to carry on the go, but wasn't really my preference. Now I have been wearing this a couple of days and let me just start off by saying that I really, really, really like this fragrance. Right in the opening, you get that cherry. You also get a little bit of raspberry and that bergamot. And in my opinion, the raspberry and the bergamot in the opening helps the cherry just not be so cloying. It's almost like it gives that cherry like a zing or this helps that cherry pop a little bit more. The cherry is very sweet, very sexy, but it doesn't smell like cough syrup. Like it's not giving Robitussin at all. Once it dries down and we get into those heart notes, that praline, that heliotrope, that little bit of rose and jasmine, just to give it, just to give it that ever so slight floral touch. It's floral, but it's not too floral. And as it dries down, I am still picking up the cherry. I'm picking up the woody notes, but they're kind of soft and in the background for me. There are a number of woody notes in the base of this fragrance, but it's really soft and kind of taking a back seat to the cherry for me as it dries down. And I think that's because of the Palo Santo. Like it's really, really soft. I feel like that woodiness just adds a bit of depth and rounds out the fragrance to where it's not too sweet. And you all know that I think all fragrances are unisex. People can wear what they want, when they want, how they want. But this is definitely a unisex scent. I don't see this leaning one way or the other. I don't see it being too masculine or too feminine. I am able to pick up some notes more than others on the stick, but let me go ahead and spray it on my skin. Like I said, I have been wearing this for a couple of days and that bergamot and that raspberry is playing so well with this burning cherry note, I have to say. When you hear the burning cherry note, please don't take it literally. Think more along the lines of a warm, sweet cherry pie filling. Like you're just eating the filling, not the pie crust. On my skin, this wears completely different than it does on paper. I am riding the wave of the opening notes for quite some time. I feel like on my skin at least, this really, really projects for like the first 30, 45 minutes. After about the 30, 45 minute mark, I feel like it becomes a more intimate skin scent and it dries down really, really soft after that like, I won't say beast mode, but like, beast mode-ish opening. As it dries down on my skin, I'm definitely getting that jasmine. You all know if you watch my fragrance videos, that jasmine is one of my absolute favorite notes. So I'm always able to pick that up. Something about a good white floral just makes me really happy and makes me feel beautiful. Throughout the wear of the fragrance, at least on my skin, from the opening to the dry down, I am able to pick up the cherry. But I think it's the other notes of the fragrance, at least the ones that we know, that really help to play up that cherry scent. 
and I think the way that this was formulated helps the cherry not to smell medicinal. There is definitely an almondy accent. What's up, almond brown? And that's probably from the heliotrope. Heliotrope definitely gives that almond, nutty type of essence. As far as me and many other people are concerned, cherry and almond are just soulmates and they just go hand in hand. You are not going to see or smell one without the other. The praline is also helping to play up the sweetness and even a creaminess to the cherry. And then once we get down to the base, we get all of these woody notes as well as some patchouli. The woody notes are definitely there, but in my opinion, the woody notes are really, really soft. And while it does give the fragrance a bit of depth, it's just helping me to enjoy that burning cherry note in a different way than the florals in the mid and the fruits in the opening. As far as the performance, performance I'm getting mid to moderate projection on my skin for a good four hours around the six hour mark I'm able to still pick it up on my skin but I gotta go looking for it you know what I'm saying like it doesn't really it's not a beast mode fragrance this is definitely an intimate skin scent I've worn this to bed I've worn this during my work day and I've also worn this at night layered with something else we'll get into layering combinations later in the video now of course we know that shower and body care routines definitely enhance fragrances I definitely need to start catering my shower routines to whatever fragrance I'm choosing for the day but for me and my trifling lazy ass I'm getting around four to six hours of course if you are a layering extraordinaire like AI the great or my good sis Denise Adore this will probably project and perform way better better, way louder, way longer on your skin. I find that if I'm wearing this after about four, maybe five hours, I'm going to have to reapply it in order for me to really enjoy the fragrance the way I like to enjoy the fragrance. But I do have a couple of layering combos that I would recommend with this scent as well. Of course, you can layer this with other scents from the Kaoli lineup. I haven't tried any other Kaoli scents just yet, but they do have a recommendation list on their website, and I'll make sure I leave that link down below in the description box. Of course, after I told you about that sweet cherry almondy vibe that this fragrance gives you could layer this with Tom Ford's Lost Cherry which is the epitome of a date night fragrance. Tom Ford's Lost Cherry has that same deep sweet rich warm nutty essence to it that will play really really well with this. In case you don't want to be bothered with the longevity or the price tag of Tom Ford there's also the dupe or inspired by route as well. I don't really bang with that brand anymore but there is a Tom Ford Lost Cherry dupe that I have mentioned on my channel multiple times and I just know it's going to play extremely well with this. That Lost Cherry dupe that I have in my collection not only has the cherry in common with this Kaoli scent, it also has amber in common. I haven't tried this combination just yet, but just smelling the similarities between this and Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, I already know somebody's gonna get pregnant. You're welcome. I've only had this scent for a couple of days, so I haven't tried out a slew of layering combos just yet. But the one layering combo that I absolutely had to try was this layered with Baccarat Rouge 540. The amber and the saffron and the woodiness of Baccarat Rouge 540 layered with that cherry, that amber, and the woody notes of this Kaoli. Let me just tell you, I smelled amazing. Those of you who are familiar with BR540 know that it's one of those scents that likes to play hide and seek. So while you may not smell it on yourself, other people definitely smell you. For a lot of us, BR540 plays a lot of games, but layered with this, invite me to the wedding, the baby shower, okay? My P.O. box is down below. Final thoughts, I really do enjoy this scent. Am I going to get a full bottle? Maybe down the line, but for right now, because I've been on a bit of a retail therapy binge, I'm gonna chill, you know what I'm saying? But is it full bottle worthy, in my opinion? Absolutely, and if you are into sweet, woody, sexy, grown scents, I would definitely recommend you pick this up. Well, folks, those are my thoughts on the new Love Fest Burning Cherry 48 scent from Kaoli. And if you're interested in anything that I mentioned here today, be sure to use the links in the description box. On your way to watching another video of mine, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Please, please, please be safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.